Hi, welcome to AlgebraClass.com. In this lesson, we will be solving equations with variables on both sides. We're going to take a look at example number three because not only do we have variables on both sides of the equation, left and right, but I also have two fractions, one on the left and one on the right. So this type of problem might make your head spin. But the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of those fractions, so that's not even a concern. I notice that both of my fractions have a denominator of 5, so that makes my first step pretty easy. I'm going to draw brackets around the left-hand side to symbolize that I'm going to multiply 5 by all of the terms inside of those brackets. But I'm also going to do the same thing to the right-hand side, because whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I need to multiply all terms on the right hand side by 5 as well. Now on the left hand side I have two terms. I have 2 fifths x. The minus sign separates the second term which is the 4. So I need to multiply 5 times 2 fifths and then I need to multiply 5 times the 4. So off to the right here, if you're not very good with fractions, you might want to write this off to the side. And if you are, you can do this mentally. So when I write this out next to each other like this, you see that 5 in the numerator and 5 in the denominator simplify to 1. That's the reason why I multiplied by 5. So I'm left with basically the numerator. 1 times 2 is 2. So I'm left with 2x. Now I'm going to do 5 times negative 4, which is negative 20. So I'm going to write that as minus 20. So now I've gotten rid of that fraction on the left-hand side. I need to do the same on the right-hand side. 5 times 8 is 40. And 5 times negative 3 fifths is going to give me a negative number. So again, let's do 5 times 3 fifths, and hopefully you're finding a pattern here. Because we're multiplying by the denominator, the numerator and the denominator will simplify to 1, and I'm basically left with what was in the numerator, which is 3, so it becomes minus 3x. So now in that very first step, I was able to get rid of those fractions, which makes this a lot easier. I don't even have the distributive property now to contend with. All I need to do is make sure that all of my terms with the variable x are on one side of the equation, and all of my terms with constant numbers are on the other side of the equation. So what I'm going to do first, I like to concentrate on the variables first. and just out of comfort's sake, I like the variables on the left. So I'm going to start by trying to move this minus 3x over to the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is bring down the 40 minus 3x. And since this is minus 3x, I know that I can get rid of that, or I can make that 0, by adding 3x, because the opposite of subtract is add. Now, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation. So on the left-hand side of the equation, I have the 2x, but I need to add the 3x to keep the equation balanced. So I'm going to sneak the 3x right here so I can combine like terms. And I also have the minus 20. So notice that I have the 2x minus 20 but I'm also adding 3x to both sides. Now, on the right-hand side, the reason I did this is negative 3x plus 3x is 0. I've been able to eliminate that term from the right-hand side. I'm left with 40 on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have 2x plus 3x, which is 5x, and I still have the minus 20. So notice that just by adding 3x to both sides, I was able to get all of my variables on one side of the equation. And now I have a two-step equation. I need to get rid of this minus 20. So I'm going to take my 5x minus 20, and I'm going to add 20 to both sides, because the opposite of subtract is add. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side as well. 
So I'm adding 20 to both sides of the equation. So negative 20 plus 20 is 0. And that's how I'm left with just the 5x on the left-hand side. And 40 plus 20 is 60. Now I'm down to a simple one-step equation where I have 5x. And if I divide by 5 on both sides of the equation, I know that 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 1 times x is x. So I have x equals 60 divided by 5, which is 12. So I end up with a final answer of x equals 12. And that concludes our final example for equations with variables on both sides.